Hello again, everybody. Welcome back. Here we're looking at the completed uh, cheap little uh, oscilloscope kit. I got the one where all the surface mount components were already already done. I guess it's just as easy to ship that because it's still almost perfectly flat. Um, I heard it from Alice. It was like twenty dollars, I think, twenty U.S. dollars. Um, I might be wrong on that, but I know it's about twenty dollars right now. And I thought, worst case scenario, it's going to be good solder practice. I can test out my cheapy iron that I got from Banggood. Um, and by test it, I've already used it with the little tiny tip it comes with, and, and I don't like that fine tip. Um, so I ordered some tips that cost well more than the iron for a two-pack. They have a higher thermal mass, and the tip is actually more of a tiny little bit of a D shape on the end, so one side is curved and one side is flat, and I prefer that shape for most of the work that I do. I've been doing that for solder, soldering for my uh, RC model stuff for a long time. Get that focus again. Um, it's a pretty simple kit here after that, because with the surface mount stuff already done for you, you're just doing your through hole stuff. Um, there's a few components that you have to th think about before you do or I might call them tricky, um, especially if you're new to soldering, and these might be ones. You want to make sure you have an iron that can hold its heat pretty well. The one that I'm going to tell you to tin first, the outside shielding of, of the BNC connector, there's two pins on either side, um, on the bottom. You want to lightly tin them first, because it's going to take a bit of heat to get a good bond to this because the the whole BNC connector is a great heat sink and it took a while to get the uh, solder to stick with at least with that iron I had to crank it up to what it said was 450 to get a good quick uh, solder on that um, same with the outside of this I didn't have to set the iron any hotter than I think I had it at 250 for these um, the other one that's can be a trip uh, a bit tricky is uh, and you can, I mean essentially you could leave this off you're not planning on using or doing any USB communication with this um, but the uh, actual communication pins on the bottom of this connector are very close together so you just you just want to watch when you're putting that on uh, in my kit this choke or coil inductor back here is much bigger than the circumference of what was marked on the board in the plan and the uh, pin pitch for the wires that came out of it um, was almost double the spacing they put in the board so you, you had to bend those leads in uh, and get them through and it, uh, just make sure it's not going to touch where the screen would be it's going to be far enough over to clear the screen um, anyhow as you're putting this together one other thing there's lots of videos on YouTube about building this so uh, in a way the fact that I lost the footage of that I'm, I'm not happy about it but I'm not going to worry about it I wouldn't want to do that again but I am going to mention one thing the thing that I like to do and if you're new to soldering especially stacked modules and stuff like that anybody who's ever done uh, some of the Arduinos uh, or the kits for the um, expansion shields especially if you uh, got through from Adafruit I think they're pretty good about telling people to do this once you got the female headers down on the main board below before you go to make a daughter board or an expansion board or whatever put the male pins that you're going to solder into the actual female jacks then put the board on then solder it and this one you can always take it off and then do the steps you got to do for testing before first power up but if you do it this way you're going to get good solder or at least you're going to have the pins aligned and in such a way that you know they're going to line up you're not going to have any cockeyed pins that you're going to have to reheat and, and, and do after also the plastic that holds these pins, I'm just going to come down here, see if this will focus here for us, it's pretty close. The plastic that holds the male side, if you see here on these ones here, it's only a thin little bit of plastic. And when you're soldering those, that plastic can get soft, and then your pins go wonky. Pins go wonky real quick. And, uh, and, and I'm mean just using wonky like a, like it's a real term, but um, you could say it however you want, but they... they can get bad and then you're trying to hold these pins in line in the air it's just it's just not a good thing so for those of you that have been doing it for a while you'll already 
probably do it this way or you have a much larger breadboard you like to line everything up with and that's fine too but uh, some, most of the time I just like plugging it in right on the way it's going to be just in case for some reason the bottom ones maybe you put the female ones in a little bit out of alignment at least that way this connection to those is going to be in line for themselves regardless of if they're all out of line a little bit they'll at least be in line with each other between the daughter board and the main board and yeah that was way worse than it needed to be but that's a little tip that i like to do when i'm making these kind of things the machine itself uh, works great like i said i was thinking at worst it would be solder practice and if it worked yay i'll have a nice little uh, oscilloscope for testing some stuff most of the arduino type things that i do um, this is going to be plenty good enough um, I just have it running the test signal here and I think one of the calibration screens where you turn this trim pot to get this corner here as sharp as you can and uh, all of that was fairly easy to do um, it's a very fast updating display I think I had um, had it here updating before really fast uh, some audio stuff but I was actually uh, I actually thought it was pretty pleasant to see that it actually in real life and this cell phone probably doesn't even do it justice there's probably more there's probably more flicker being picked up by from by my cell phone uh, camera here than you see in real life uh, the display looks very good now I've got the uh, the scratch guard protection back on it because it's just near my my crappy workbench we'll call it <laughs> and I don't want something to fall and hit it and make a scratch um, what I'll probably do later is I've got a whole bunch of screen protectors from an old Blackberry that we no longer have um, I bought a bunch of them for like uh, I think it was like two dollars it was like five in a pack and I'm pretty sure this this screen is smaller than the Blackberry screen so what I'll do is I'll just uh, trim one out and then put down a screen protector from the Blackberry on that and uh, that should look pretty good and keep it protected because it uh, it's a nice no glare screen under there and I'd really after all that I'd really hate to scratch it but anyhow it was a good product uh, when you consider value for money uh, because you get to practice your soldering and in the end after soldering a bunch of through hole components and there's quite a few of them um, you should have a working oscilloscope if all the parts were right and you're being fairly safe um, don't know if I mentioned the only thing that came packaged in ESD safe packaging was the screen the board with the ICs and stuff was just in a piece of generic uh, clear bubble pack kind of stuff not ESD dissipative at all um, I was a little bit surprised about that uh, it was also just packed in a little plastic -y envelope in fact here's the package this is the package everything came in with a little bit of bubble pack and the bubble pack wasn't even pink bubble pack for the everything and then it was little baggies little baggies like this for the passives and, and whatnot um, so I didn't have a whole lot of hope for it working I actually figured maybe a few things would have got damaged in uh, shipping from the post office in fact the only thing that had bent pins was uh, two of these switches had one or two of the uh, pins on the bottom bent there's about eight pins on the bottom of these three position switches otherwise everything else was pretty good it uh, went together easy total assembly time if you did it start to finish concentrating and just did it in one felt swoop uh, and uh, being somewhat methodical I think you can do them comfortably in two hours taking a break or two or whatever um, the footage that I did and lost uh, was shot over I think three days um, because uh, unfortunately I have to go to work and whatnot um, but I was watching TV and stuff while doing it and then just taking some footage, but unfortunately I lost that, but, uh, probably not a big loss for you guys. Anyhow, I'm sure, uh, you guys have seen enough of these units. Um, I just wanted to put a few of my, my tips out there as far as, um, how I did a few things and, and thought on it. So if you got any questions or whatever, or any tips on using these little guys or modifications you've done, uh, put them in the comments down below. Um, if you like this kind of stuff and my uh, ramblings about uh, tech that came in the mail or stuff I've played with or whatnot, because I've got some uh, stepper motor stuff to do next. Anyhow, if you like that kind of stuff, uh, don't forget to subscribe and uh, like and share with your friends.
And uh, as always, thanks for watching. And uh, stay tuned for upcoming crazy stuff. Bye.